Welcome everybody to a breakdown of patch open beta 68 for Paladins. And wow, this patch is massive, dropping loads of stuff. So new map, new game mode, new skin system, new skins, new UI. Pretty much everything is going on here, which is why I'm going to split up this breakdown into two videos. They haven't actually released the forum notes for the patch yet on the fine balance, which I think I could do on a whole video on because almost every champion in the game is going to be changed. So I'm basically going to cover everything but the champion balance in this video. Also, the public test server is set to go live tomorrow, so if you haven't downloaded it already, then it's worth maybe trying to get that out. And you can just find that on Steam. It's a further down on the Paladin Steam page. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So there's a new UI. They've completely gotten rid of the ads before, and the sort of very old blocky UI we had previously in OB67. Now there's an animated backdrop of a character this time around. It's Demon Genos, one of the new skins in the patch, which I'll talk about a bit later. And in the backdrop of Ascension's Peak. Now, wow, this looks epic. And this is so much cleaner than it was before. I'm so happy with this. It looks so modern. I'm not going to lie, there were a lot of posts recently on Twitter where people were updating the UI themselves and changing certain things. And... These have actually, these changes have seemed to have gone through. I think maybe the devs were giggling to themselves as they saw these posts. Because another thing they've added is a new system for the loading screen. So now the loading screen, you see all of the character portraits, but you get the splash art of whatever skin you're wearing for that character. And they have changed the borders as well. So when you're actually loading in, you don't see the current ranked border, but you see new borders that they put in the game. You can get some with skins, which I'll talk about again a little bit later. And also there's ranked quests to try and unlock these frames that do also refer to your ranks in previous seasons. All in all, I think this is way cleaner on both sides of the UI and rather epic. Moving on, the new map, Ascension's Peak, which was in the backdrop, also looks epic. They've been showing it off a bit with some of the champions running around it. And it looks like it's got a visual update since they released it in China as Maple Leaves Court, which was what it used to be called. There's even sky whales being animated in the background as the map comes into play. And wow. I haven't talked about the lore yet, but there is a, a cartoon where there's Genos versus Khan and the magistrates and everything. And I do very much get the vibe of Avatar, Last Airbender, where you've basically got like the Fire Kingdom, and you've got the Air Tribes, because this is almost like an Air Tribes sort of city. Instead of Sky Whales, you have the Sky Bison, but that's just my little observation there. Also worth mentioning is Khan is not coming this patch, although he will be there in a sort of passive capacity. He's sort of laying siege to the map, but will be coming in Open Beta 69. I know some people will be a bit disappointed about that, but there we go. There's also new quests and basically a new game mode coming to this new map. It's the Paladins versus the Magistrate, and once you get into the game, it's an onslaught match, but the characters are randomly assigned between one team being the Paladins and one team being the Magistrates. During this match, you are in the Siege of Ascension's Peak, so fire is raining down from the skies and tre as trebuchets are firing over and basically laying waste to the map. This map is also Blitz. Genos has used his power to basically buff everybody and everyone has an extra 50% cooldown reduction. So there's going to be some real insanity here in terms of the builds that people can come up with and how often people will be using and spamming their abilities. I think on top of the fire raining down, it's going to look rather crazy with so many abilities popping off. And Dodger or Cassie is obviously coming back. They have said that there's going to be an intro that will tease everyone going in, but we'll see more on what that is tomorrow. On the quest, anyone can do the quest for gold and VIP points, but there are parts of the quest that are linked to buying the skin packs that are related to this quest and in this patch that you do have to buy with crystals. So if you do buy some of the skin packs, you'll get a crest and basically doing the quests for this new mode and for the event will unlock you something called roaming emotes. Now roaming emotes are emotes that will still lock you out of all your abilities and firing like emotes currently, but you can actually move around whilst these are going on. So there's a dancing Strix, dancing Maeve and dab and Roxas. Be sure to let me know what you think of this in the comment section below, but I mean, Fortnite's got away with it, and I see so many people using it, so it's a popular skin. And, and honestly, most of these skins 
and most of these systems are high res moving away from the pay to win system towards a, a good healthier free to play actually the cosmetics below all the cosmetics below are direct purchase too so they're even getting rid of the rng and the loot boxes well to some degree this patch which i think is a good move so let's get on to the cosmetics so there's three big skins for this patch for this event and each of them comes with a diamond chest roll an mvp pose and one of these crests which can unlock you these roaming emotes and each one is direct purchasable by 300 crystals and there's one that's a little bit special but the first one is academic sky which looks like your typical high school anime character kind of but does show a little bit more fidelity on some of the stuff we'd seen before there's music on the smoke screen and the ultimate it's a bit funky and generally this one looks pretty cool the next one is Jade Priestess Sarah's, and wow, you can actually see Sarah's hair here. Like, we've seen Sarah's hair for the first time, and it's kind of short. It's kind of cool. Uh, this is, it's like the Jade Priestess, so she's got like a Jade Snake in her weapon, and Jade Trinkets and things. But it almost looks Egyptian slash Asian. They sort of maybe mix the two together. And finally, on the normal ones that you can purchase is Demon Slayer Zin, and this has a ridiculous, like, Geno's hair. Like, it's like anime hair, it's like sticking right up and generally just looks epic, especially with a sword which has a demon face on the hilt and like demon sort of rune or demon covering across the actual blade. And again, 300 crystals. There is a bonus to all of these skins and that is if you buy all three, which is 900 crystals in total, which is about $20, you will get Soul Eater Genos. And Soul Eater Genos is literally taking it to the next level with skins. I haven't seen anything in Paladins this epic so far. You're now kind of a mix between Doom and a sort of Asian-inspired Oni, and this is incredible. The, v the effect VFX too as well, like the eyeball moving around on your weapon, just generally everything working around. There's loads of effects where there's almost like runes going off on your ulti, and all the symbols have changed, and this is, I would say, incredible. And just shows you how far they can go without the parts and pieces system when they can have one skin, and shows you kind of where they're taking it. So technically you do get it for free, but also you do have to purchase other things. But four skins for 900 crystals is actually pretty good and for saying how high quality these skins are. So I hope that Hyrus does well out of this. Next up, season two is bringing quite a few map reworks to the game. And most of them I think are good. So the biggest one I think that has been a problem for a long time is ice mines. They're making it so when you are almost at the point, there's a portcullis where you can see through and you can actually shoot through and demount people at the moment so if you're a victor you can shoot through it and demount say if you have master riding and the enemies don't so you get there first but mainly it just blocks you from going through there what happens now is that if you capture the point the siege point once that happens then those gates will open and what this essentially does is it means that you don't have to go onto the point and get into like that's always been kind of a choke center in this map and it sort of shortens the distance from where you spawn to where you get back into the fight with the map because you don't have to go around the point area again and all those bends and all those choke points you can just miss out and go straight forwards. I don't know whether this is going to completely fix Ice Mines, it's still a very long map but this is a big step in the right direction in my opinion. Next up is Frozen Guard, it's had a lighting and shader update, it does generally look better, it looks kind of a bit more blue. There's more cover on the payload push towards the end of the map, which was a kind of a problem before because it was very difficult to push it through at the end, especially if the enemy team had like a Grover and a Sniper. They've also gotten rid of the invisible bushes, which is something that seemed maybe like they were moving away from that mechanic anyway during the map. And also there's on the side where the mi two mines connect up on the flanking route that's actually closest to the point they've opened it up massively and there's still cover there loads of pillars it generally looks more epic and you can see that platform which has always been kind of a, a stunning thing but you kind of miss it and generally there's going to be some more hectic fights around there and it'll be a bit less choky than it was before i actually think that's also a good update on frog isle it's more sort of quality of life stuff foliage removed and things like that that would maybe get you stuck the one that I'm not entirely sure about is Timber Mill. So here, the, the foot walls on the higher, higher tier vantage point, so you, on either side of the point, you have those big towers, and there's walls around those now, and there's also walls where you would have sniped before. I am sort of mixed on that. 
I mean, snipers were very powerful before, and there wasn't much counter to them, but they have removed one of the flank routes on the map. They basically closed off the doors to what the side flank routes, I don't know exactly how you'd call them, they basically come in sort of mid-height on the platforms on either left and right. So there is less options for flankers to come through and be covered, but then again, snipers also have less area where they can see because the walls are blocking off most of it. Something I do like about Paladins is the flanking options on the map and how open you are to have different options to move through and there's not always just one mega choke point. So here I'm not thrilled but then again it's only mainly for the siege portion of the map and then the payload towards the end is actually quite open and there's quite a few verticalities and several flank routes anyway on that last stretch towards the point. Be sure to let me know what you think about these map changes in the comment section below. There's quite a few things changed there. They've also announced what's coming in Season 2 generally so that they've changed the, the placement requirements. You'll only need to play 10 games now for placement and this is also in context to there being a soft reset. What this means is it doesn't completely get rid of your current elo that you have ground out in the game now in open beta 67 or up to open beta 67 in season one if you are higher on the, the scale you'll still be higher than other players but generally all players have been pulled towards the center so if you were very low you were the lowest bronze you'll probably be pushed higher up towards the middle and if you were a grandmaster you'll probably be pushed down close to the middle too there's also going to be two bands which we talked about before and something we definitely didn't know before is a season two rank rewards. One of the first rewards for playing 25 games is you'll get a town crier announcer pack, which is just basically a jolly sort of announce pack. I just think it sounds a lot better than the default one. So definitely something I'd pick up. Also, you get a gold chest just for placing in season two. So just a bit of an incentive to play it. And also there's the big skin this time. Last time it was Terramorph Drogos. If you get to gold five, you will get full throttle Vivian, which is what we data mined as biker vivian which thing is but vivian's actual normal skin is pretty meh i think this one definitely will be something people want to pick up at 200 wins you'll get a loading frame which brings out a frame to show your highest placement for each of the splits so i'm guessing it's going to show you last season season one's ranking so whenever you get into a game and also 100 wins will give you the warbound title Again, I'm not going to cover balance in this video because I think there's going to be a hell of a lot and I think this could be a 40 minute video if I talked about both of these things. Most of these changes I'm super hyped about. I'm hopefully going to be doing a stream tomorrow as long as the internet is willing. So be sure to check that out once the PTS goes live. Again, if you want to download it, maybe start downloading it now because you have to download each patches leading up to Open Beta 68. So you have time before tomorrow to get that done. And be sure to let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section below. Personally, I think the future looks bright for Paladins. These are all great changes. And just moving away from the stinky old Open Beta 64 sort of stigma that had a little bit of a play quite a while ago. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe for more of my content, and hit that bell icon to become part of the notification squad. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Joshino.